To sustain inclusive food security outcomes, we know that farmers' access to quality inputs, particularly seed, is critical to the ability to increase productivity, meat resistance, and climate resilience. Yet in fragile contexts, such as Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, smallholders often rely on direct distribution of seed from development actors or low quality and counterfeit seeds from in informal markets. Feed the Future Enabling Environment for Food Security Project, a global provider of technical assistance to USA missions, recently conducted an assessment at the request of the DRC mission of the enabling environment for seed market systems in six provinces of Eastern DRC. The study examines how development actors and the public sector can support the foundation necessary for private sector investment in the seed sector. This is the focus of today's webinar. So this webinar will have three parts. First, someone is still not muted. Can you please mute your that's good. No, no, what? On Autumn Step Rubber Team so somehow they're getting that that block. Please mute phone. Welcome to me. That would be great. Thank you very much. I continue. <laughs> okay, so going back to the parts of the webinar. First, we're going to have uh, the mission in Kinshasa will introduce their priorities related to the seed sector, describe their rationale for the study, and discuss some of the mission's objectives in Eastern DRC. Next, we will hear from the consultants in that carry out the DRC seed market system for a discussion on findings and recommendations, including a phase roadmap to support the development of a well-functioning seed market system that will support smallholder access to quality seeds. Finally, we will take the last half hour of our speakers to answer some of your questions. A few housekeeping items. You already hear me repeating many times uh, to mute your phones, and, and particularly the presenter. Please introduce yourself in the chat box. Please your name and organization, and be sure to post questions you may have for our speakers. Our moderators will be collecting them and will post them to our speakers for their views during the Q&A session. If you experience some technical issues, please raise them in the chat box, and the tech team will assist you. Allow me to introduce our speakers. Agustin Geleka is the Agriculture Development Specialist at the USA DRC Mission. He has worked with USA since 2008 in the Economic Growth Office. Responsible for the monitoring and supervision of agriculture development activities and engaging with the donor community in advocating for improved food security, nutrition, and better agricultural practices. Prior to USA, he worked more than 10 years with government agriculture institutions, including the Ministry of Agriculture, Seed Quality, Seed Quality Control Service, and the National Agriculture Research Institute. He has an MS in agronomy from Texas A&M University. Juan Ignacio Trives Pire is an agronomist and seed systems expert specializing in every aspect of the seed and plant material sector, from germplasm prospection to breeding seed production, and intellectual property rights. Juan served as a technical advisor at the Spanish National Seed Institute and has since worked across Central and East Asia, the Middle East, and North and Sub-Saharan Africa, where he has provided institutional support and aid capacity building to create efficient 
legal and institutional framework for seed market regulation. Juan graduated from the Madrid Polytechnic University and holds a postgraduate diploma in plant breeding and seed production in the OECD International Center for Higher Mediterranean Agronomical Studies. Roger Shongo, Roger Shongo, sorry, is a senior agronomist specializing in Central and West Africa with focus on seed security assessment, seed development startup, entrepreneurship in agroforestry, and biocarbon evaluation. Roger has worked in DRC as a seed expert at the National Seed Service, followed by serving as the branch head for PMURR, a rehabilitation and reconstruction program in its seed, in its seed division. Roger has also worked on emergency and rehabilitation programs in the Central African Republic on seed security, the Sahel, and on seed programs such. He is a graduate of the University of Ray de Bruxelles in Belgium. At this time, Okay, we're just having a little bit of background noise. Uh, Agustin, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, it's now your turn. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Hello, yes. everyone. So go ahead, please. My name is, yes. My name is Augustin Geleka. And uh, I am the Agricultural Development Specialist at USAID Mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. The completion of uh, this seed assessment has been one of the highlights of the agricultural team and marks an important step forward in understanding the constraints of the seed sector here in the DRC. The mission initiated this seed assessment for two main reasons. The first reason is that during the design process for new agricultural activities, it became apparent that knowledge about the state of the seed sector was an area which the mission needed to better understand. The lack of availability of good quality seed has undermined the country's agricultural productivity for decades. Donors have also focused more on other priorities than the seed sector. However, it is not normal for a country with huge agricultural potentials like the DRC not to have a regulated and viable seed sector. With its favorable climatic conditions, and arable land availability, the DRC can play a determinant role in agricultural trade and the food security 
on the African continent. The second reason for the study was to share fundings with both the donor community and the host government in order to provide investment opportunities in the sector at this precise moment when the new government is willing to develop the agricultural sector. A comprehensive survey of the seed sector would be a useful contribution and uh, would support necessary reforms in the agricultural sector. Now let me provide a little more context and explain briefly what the mission is present presently doing. The purpose of the seed sector assessment conducted in Eastern DRC was to identify the barriers and the opportunities for improving small orders from other farmers access to high quality seeds. The assessment was conducted in the following provinces, Okatanga, Lualaba, North Kivu, South Kivu, Tanganyika, and Ituri. These provinces are currently the priority areas of investment for USAID mission as determined in our mission's country development cooperation strategy, CDCS. The mission's flagship Feed the Future activity is being implemented in the province of South Kivu, focusing on coffee, soybean, and common bean value chains. The availability of good seeds is one of the major challenges for the successful implementation of these value chains. All the challenges which undermine food security are the presence of armed conflicts, recurrent health epidemics such as the recent Ebola outbreak, and frequent population displacement. The seed assessment provides both a comprehensive review of the sector and actionable steps forward for re reform that the new government of the DRC can focus on and provide a solid basis for development in the agricultural sector. With that said, I will now turn it over to you, Juan, for details on this assessment. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Juan, now it's over to you, please. Juan, you should be now back on. Can you hear us? So bear with us. Juan, can you test now your microphone? You should be able to see it now. Okay, sorry, I found it. There was a telephone. Can sorry. you hear me now? Sorry for that. We can hear you now. 
No, yeah, because no. I, I, I didn't one. realize the small telephone was hidden there. Okay, oh. okay. Well, thank you, Augustin, for the introduction. Before we dive into the detailed findings and recommendations of the assessment, it would be good to begin with a common understanding of the objectives of seed system development. The success of a crop initially depends on the genetic quality of the seed used. Agricultural seeds carry the genetic characteristics selected in the parent plants. Such characteristics include adaptability to particular environments like resistance to drought or length of the growing period, pest and disease resistance, potassium yield or nutritional value. The potential of the final crop is so defined the moment the seed is placed in the ground. The type of seed available, at what time, and with what characteristic controls food security and nutrition outcomes. The overall objective of seed system development is to facilitate farmer access to quality seed. To do so, we need to enable private sector investment in the production and distribution of affordable, reliable, high quality seed, which is adapted to their environment. And, okay, uh, the, enable, the enable environment for seeds Let's see now how fragile contexts can affect seed systems. Okay, I think I'm missing half of the slides. Voila. Okay, in any seed system, there are two subsystems that coexist. One, the traditional subsystem represented in the graphic by the black arrows, which now is often referred to as the informal system. In the traditional system, farmers engage in traditional on-farm breeding and select their seed from their own crops or local exchange. And second, the formal subsystem, which are the blue arrows in the outside of the graphics, in which modern plant breeding techniques and formal regulation are used to produce high quality seed with a specific characteristic for distribution and sale on a larger scale. Seed market regulations ensure the quality of seed through two main procedures. The first one is clearly defining varietal characteristic through the registration of the variety in a variety catalog. And second, based on those registered descriptions, conducting inspection and testing during seed production and sale to certify that the seed sold to farmers matches the description on the label. Uh, so there are in, in the formal system, there are specialized seed crops producing the seed. In the traditional system, is the same commercial crop where the seed are selected for next year. To be given an analogy of the formal system, it is similar to the pharmaceutical industry. Governments require clear definitions of the ingredients in any medicine. Test to ensure that quality and purity are maintained during production and proper labeling to protect consumers. There is a strange noise in the background. In Matthews' systems, as seen in the left graphic, a strong formal subsystem is represented by the thick solid blue line facilitates a regular introduction on innovative new varieties in response to farmer demand. 
which increases yields and resilience to climate change and leads to improved food security and nutrition outcomes. The traditional subsistence continues to exist, now with a mixture of traditional varieties and improved ones, but is decreased in importance as a source of agricultural seed. Food grain is sold in agricultural market as grain for consumption, not as seed. I, 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 I'm experiencing a very strong background. Can you hear me properly? I think it's gone now. In, in the contrary, in fragile context, as shown on the right graphic, the formal subsistence very often breaks down. Seed testing facilities and seed production machinery may be looted or destroyed, and violence and internal displacement disrupt production and supply lines, both for seed and commercial agriculture. As a result, seed regulatory institutions lose their capacity to conduct proper variety registration and seed certification, which allows fake seed to enter the market and undermines farmers' trust in the seed sold. In fragile context, farmer demand is often replaced by demand from humanitarian relief programs and government procurement. But the scale of these procurements combined with insufficient capacity to regulate quality, restricts market access for small scale seed producers and allows poor quality seed to be channeled to farmers most in need of support. With the formal subsystem in this array, the diversity of varieties available to farmers is substantially diminished. The traditional subsistence takes on renewed importance, and where locally sourced seed is insufficient to meet farmer needs, farmers resort to buying grain in local markets to use as seed. As a result, private sector investment in the seed system is stunted, and farmers lack access to high quality seed. Figuring out how to re-establish the foundations for private sector investment, the formal seed system is the critical challenge of fragile context. Uh, let's check about uh, the assessment. It's, uh, it's the an hybrid environment for seed security project undertook a study in July of 2019 across six provinces of the Eastern DRC, as highlighted in orange in the map, with a focus on seed for 10 target, target crops. The team consulted more than 100 stakeholders, including seed producers, agro-dealers, importers, national and provincial level government officials, seed research institutions, NGOs, and other donors to gain a well-rounded view of current seed system dynamics. To frame the analysis, the team employed the seed clear methodology, which stands for seed commercial legal institutional reform, which evaluates the enabling environment for seed by assessing the relative maturity of both the legal framework and seed regulatory institutions. This methodology pinpoints where reforms will be most effective and enables the development of a phased strategy for seed system development, even in fragile contexts such as the DRC. Uh, recommendations on the construction of uh, the roadmap. The DRC Seed Clear report provides a roadmap for seed system development in Eastern DRC. 
This slide is just a screenshot of a portion of the roadmap. Roger will let will get you into the details of the recommendation in just a moment. But we wanted to provide an overview of what the roadmap is and how it is intended to be used. First, the roadmap acknowledges that seed system development will have a long time horizon and will require coordinated investment by the government and development partners. It covers 15 years in three phases, from foundational reforms necessary in years one and two to long-term reforms targeted for year old eight and beyond. Second, the roadmap covers various aspects of the legal framework, see regulatory institutions and market development strategies, recognizing that all three must be developed in tandem over time to facilitate the gradual evolution of a well-functioning seed system. With that, I will now turn things over to Roger to discuss the findings and recommendations in more detail. Uh, you can take over, Roger, with uh, findings and recommendations. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Roger. Before jumping in the detail of the finding of recommendation, it should be good to make a short overview of commitment of donors in the seed sector in the DRC. Eastern DRC, the region are experimenting repeat periods of political upheaval and insecurity since 1990, which have and determine which have and determine donor effort to transform the seed sector and prevented implementation of a long term strategy. Donor efforts were suspended twice in nineteen nine and recent increase in violence and a new Ebola outbreak currently threatened to dis disrupt seed support once again. The legal framework for seed is not complete, so regulations exist, but the country as a whole still lack of seed law and comprehensive holistic regulatory framework. In addition, seed regulatory institutions, which are already weakened, was from multiple rounds of violence and looting, do not receive consistent budgetary support. In this context, access to seed in the Eastern DRC is primarily guided by short term development project which results in a react in reactionary response from seed sector actor rather than a long term vision for seed system investment. It has been difficult in this environment to establish strong institution, professional seed companies and a stable seed market. Overview of kind of key finding now. The seed the six province with research in the Eastern DRC can be divided into two groups. While both groups represent fragile context, they have very different characteristics. In the north province of Katanga, South Kivu, North Kivu, and Ituri are a classic fragile context. Chronic instability and violence 
have resulted in the seed market driven by emergency seed relief programs. The formal system continues to operate at, le at least nominally to serve the need of humanitarian programs, but these programs actually disincentivize the production of quality seeds because the massive size of the seed tenders drives traders to provide any seed or grain available and the seed authority senasem faces pressure to certify sufficient seed to meet the tender demands without having the capacity to do so, so properly while there are some private seed producer very few sell directly to farmer and they struggle to complete in a market that does any compensate quality. In the southern province of Okatanga and Lualaba, peace are largely being restored and commercial agriculture is beginning to be established. Sea producer with donor support have created an association to engage one seed issue and the region has even begun exporting small amount of seed informally. Despite these bright spots, Senasem is not more equipped to regulate the formal seed sector in these provinces than in North. And the region needs substantial investment in strengthening the regulatory framework and institution to build the condition for renewed private sector investment in the seed sector. Now the market development in fragile context. We will discuss finding and recommendation across three key areas and seed system development in fragile context. Market development, strengthening seed regulatory institution and national and provincial seed policy. First, market development. As described by uh, Juan and in overview of the two region of Eastern DRC, seed market is in fragile context are often stunted by low demand due to the lack of a commercial agriculture in these areas. Weak regulatory institutions allow fake seeds to enter the market which undermines trust between the farmer and seed producer, where private seed, private sector investment remain Seed companies offer structure their business model to reduce risk by serving only a very limited local market on integrated integrating seed production with their own agriculture production with little commercial demand marketing skill are weak. There were also be very few varieties available for seed company to produce either because research institutions do not have the capacity to maintain and produce basic seed or because demand is spurred by humanitarian tender that center on limited subset of varieties. Now the recommendation for improve market development in fragile context. The recommendation for market development vary depend on the type of fragile context. In conflict area or immediate post-conflict region such as Northern Province, the primary goal should be to improve donor coordination and orient humanitarian program in a way that reward the 
production of high quality seed. This can be accomplished through, for example, establishment a code of conduct of private sector sensitive guideline for seed tenders, increasing coordination of knowledge sharing among donor projects and NGOs to promote seed distribution strategy that enable farmer choice and build a link between farmer demand and private sector production. In areas with emergent commercial agriculture, such as the southern province, greater focus can be planned on direct support for private sector development, such as building private sector capacity for high quality production and facilitating access to commercially desirable varieties. In the long term, effort can shift to expanding the potential for exporting locally produced seed by facilitating the registration of local variety in regional seed catalog. Now, strengthening seed regulatory institution. The second key area of seed sector development is strengthening seed regulatory institution. As Juan, as Juan discusses, the most critical aspects of seed regulatory are clearly defined seed varieties. Through variety development and maintenance and controlling and certified seed quality quality during multiplication and distribution. Simply put, without proper, var proper variety description, there is no real formal seed system. In the DRC, the seed catalog does not define the genetic identity of the var varieties listed, which means that there is no way for seed researcher to properly maintain the variety. And there is no way for seed inspector to judge the quality of seed produced for certification. This leads to poor quality early generation seed. And the poor quality grows exponentially when the seed to multiply through successive generation for commercial certification. In some countries where seed doesn't attain the quality standard necessary to be designed as first reproduction certified seed, the government will recognize other categories of seed with the less stringent quality requirement. This category do not exist at present in DRC. Nonetheless, Senasem continue to certify Air one seed. In addition, the low capacity and resources of seed breeding and maintenance program mean to there are very few variety being maintained even at a lower quality standard, which limits the potential diversity of variety produced by the private sector. Now, how, strengthening, how to strengthening seed regulatory institution? Senasem lacks capacity across a wide range of regulatory function, all of were necessary to proper functioning of the private seed market. Given these extensive and long-term needs for physical and human resource development, it can be very difficult to know where to start. We recommend at first investment to put core quality control function first and leverage regional and private sector support where 
possible to fill other necessary role. For example, variety registration could be delegated temporarily to regional seed institution, such as SADEC Seed Center, as a SADEC member. The SADEC variety are automatically admissible in the DRC. Regional seed institution, CGR centers, and the private sector may all have greater capacity at this point to support new variety development and ongoing maintenance and storage of reference sample for exist, existing varieties. In the meantime, donor resources could be best be spent in building Senasem's capacity to implement seed inspection consistent with varietal description provided by regional catalogs. This will require a seed information management system and clearly and clear organizational structure for Senasem as well as human capacity development. At this capacity development, the DSC should recognize and promote the production of seed category existing that require less stringent quality control at level in the width in, in line with existing institutional capacity. For example, quality declared an emergency. Wow. Time is up. I don't stay one, two, two slides. I can continue. As this capacity develops, the DRC should recognize and promote the production of seed category that require less stringent quality control at the level in the line with existing institutional capacity. For example, quality declared seed and emergency seed could both be implemented with the existing Senasem resource and would ensure the seed certified by Senasem actually meets the quality standard of the category of seed market on the label. Medium and long term support can gradually expand Senasem's role in more technical area as capacity and resources permit while ensuring that quality control continue at the high level. National and provincial seed policy. The third area of seed system development we want to discuss is national and provincial seed policy. Ordinarily, we might discuss the legal and regulatory text first, but we have put it last in this presentation in recognition that in the fragile context, the formal role may have little bearing on what farmers and seed producers actually experience. A clear legal and regulatory framework is essential in a robust formal seed system, but it must be developed in tandem with the capacity of seed regulatory institution to implement it and while supporting private sector investment and seed market development. It is also important to note that while laws and regulation are often passed at the national level, action is local and this divide can lead to different policy priority at the national and provincial level. While the national government might need to continue working on aligning the national legal and regulatory framework with international best practice and regional seed trade agreement implementation on the system must be built locally from the group, from the ground up. That requires local authority that acts the public 
private consultation between those stakeholders most familiar with the local context. In DRC, the speed being designed as the National Seed Authority, Senasem has not formally been granted the necessary authority to carry out this mandate. In addition, public-private dialogue mechanisms have only just begun to be established at the local level and lack coordination to effectively lobby at the national level. Now, the recommendation for the national and provincial seed policy. In short term, we recommend enabling locally-led action to granting consistent with local realities and supported by local stakeholders. This will require lobbying for passage of seed law and authority for SENASEM, as well as strengthening the local dialogue mechanism COPROSEM. The legal framework should provide the basis for the gradual expansion regulatory function in line with institutional capacity and the need of private sector. In long term, strong public-private dialogue can provide input and buy in as more complex regulatory functions are developed, such as plant breeder rights. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Uh, thanks to everyone participating for being with us through what is rather complex topic. And if we can boil it down into some key principles or top takeaways for you to remember we're working in a fragile context, it will be these three. First, be realistic about the time frame. Acknowledge the long-term nature of seed system development, particularly in fragile contexts, and plan early for coordination. Second, leverage regional support. Work with regional seed institutions where possible to alleviate the need to remedy all areas of seed regulation immediately. And third, focus on the bright spots. Find what is working and build a strategy around existing assessed, uh, like uh, skilled seed inspectors, nascent commercial agriculture. Okay, now with that, the presentation is finished and we'd like to open it up uh, to your questions. Okay, so thank you very much, Juan Roger, again, and to you also, Agustin, for your presentation. We have several questions, comments from the participants. Uh, thank you so much. They are super good comments. Um, so I am going to, yes, yeah, I'm going to read some of the questions from um, the audience. So um, I'll start with, um, this is Sammy Nichols, a question for Juan and Roger. Do you find that the humanitarian and development community directed distribution are crowding out private sector investment? Well, so the, okay. Juan, Roger, that's uh, for you. Well, we can't. I, uh, I ask, go ahead, Roger. Uh, what we saw is the humanitarian intervention because they were making this uh, huge procurement of seed that was not possible to produce in the short time that lead immediately to the provision of fake seed of low quality seed uh, with the best of uh, intentions international agencies request uh, the legal quality as detected by the current seed regulations, which means certified seed. 
The question is that in the absence of proper maintenance of basic seed, in such a short period of time of those included in the procurement, this seed cannot be physically produced. But anyway, the, whatever, the agents, mostly opportunistic agents coming into the seed production provide this seed that cannot be of the required quality. And this disrupts, disrupts completely the seed market and, and put aside the small seed producer that normally get either they, they tweak and make fake seed or are left out of the market. Maybe, do uh, you want to add something, Roger? Hello? Roger, we cannot hear you. Hello, I saw one example in um, Ituri. The Jugu and uh, Geo tender from 92 ton of certified maize seed with uh, Senasem certificate. Only, ter uh, only 30, 30 days to conclude uh, the, the tender. Uh, it's practically impossible to meet. Mm? Uh, the size of the tender also limits the participation of small seed producer to compete with the grand market for seed tender. A possible and realistic to divide tender in small lots. That's a concrete example of humanitarian situation of seeds in the east of uh, DRC. Okay, this is one of the reasons behind our recommendation to set up lower requirements categories of seeds that can actually be reached. Uh, one was a quality declared seed that doesn't have the requirement that necessary the mother seed has to be a basic or foundation seed, but any kind of certified seed is allowed to be used to produce quality declared seed. That would allow to find a still small quantities of quality Clear seed that it's truly certified quality declared seed. And then what we saw sometimes was people of Senasem identifying commercial crops that could be potentially used as seed crops. Evidently, these seed crops were, were later used to, to provide the procurement as certified seed, but evidently, if you, if you use a, a commercial grain crop to get seed, it cannot never be certified seed. That's why why we proposed the category of emergency seed, where commercial commercial crops could be upgraded to this emergency seed because there is no other way to provide for the procurements. Okay. Thank I you. hope this answers the question. More question for both of you. I have more, more questions coming up for, again, for you, Juan and Roger. Louis Ferling uh, points out the importance of informal traders at, as key channel for distribution of seed for farmers in DRC. Can you please tell us if the informal sector was considered in this study? Uh... Well, yeah, we, we, we study the seed system at the seed system dynamics. Uh, okay, uh, that you're, you're talking about informal sector. I think this is the movement of seed outside what is called the formal sector. Of, uh, there is a, the, the seed system uh, are unique. It's completely interrelated. So when, uh, when, when, a, improved variety enters farmers' crops is going to be multiplied by, by farmers. Well, somebody now just pointed out that uh, for cereal seed in Colorado, only 30% of farmer leaves was covered with certified seed. And for three years, farmers will be reducing uh, the for three years, we're using the safe, safe farm, safe seed. 
That doesn't mean that this is of these varieties informal or formal. The fact that they are using uh, the same firm said seed because they are licensed to do so by the owner of the variety. Uh, then when you're talking about informal traders of seed, I don't know exactly what does it mean. Maybe it's a, uh, is, is, is it a person who is, doesn't have a license to sell seed but brings a small amount of certified seed to the local markets? We've seen so in, 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 in Katanga with the new reactivated seed companies that were producing a small seed packets with the intention of distributing them through seed markets. Another different thing is one proper seed, as that uh, saved by farmers or from local seed exchange is proper seed, because we know the genetic background of these seeds. We have selected, we know the parent plants. In, in a fragile contest and due, I don't know, to displacement of people, to catastrophes or war or whatever reason, the local, locally available seed, as in Colorado or as in Katanga, is not available anymore because of flooding, because of terrible drought. Then, if the formal system is not working, farmers have to go to the grain markets to provide grain and use these grains as seed. I mean, Technically, they are not uh, proper. They are not proper agricultural seeds because we don't know the genetic, the genetic background, and I don't know what to expect of this grain. There are different levels. Like uh, sometimes traders know the origin and they can have some information about what these grains are. I don't can see that informal traders themselves can improve. Improve uh, seed system in fragile state, they can as far as they are intermediary in the supply of high quality seed. Yeah. Thank you, Juan. Thank you very much. We have many more questions coming up to you, so we're asked, you know, we can shorter the answer so we can get to them. So we have another question okay. from Diane Russell and Indra Klein. Both have asked a question about trust. Are there issues of farmer trust with government institutions given the fragile context? And I would also like to, that if we can give Roger and also Agustin, if you can share your experience. Thank you. Roger and Agustin, can you hear us? Can, do you hear the question? Yeah. Uh, I was saying, yeah, but regarding the, the trust, we can say that, uh, in fact, when you look, uh, presently there's not a, uh, a clear seed market existing on which you can have uh, different uh, actors who can believe, I mean, who, who can uh, trust each other because since uh, you know during the 1980s the late 1980s when the government uh, built a number of seed uh, seed farms with uh, all necessary uh, uh, equipment to process seeds uh, at that time, since they were, uh, the actors did not, I mean, the market could not really uh, catch up at that time to be able to make those uh, seed factories work properly, they, they all, I think they were uh, in the number of eight spread out in uh, different provinces, all of them went broke. And uh, around them, there were the development of a number of uh, uh, 
seed producers who were working with these uh, uh, seed plants to produce the seed that would have processed and uh, packaged it as a seed by the, uh, by the plants. So now all that has remained is uh, the informal uh, uh, seed production. We have, uh, I think, one or two actors remaining uh, maybe in the uh, mainly in the provinces, the province of Hokatanga. Uh, I think we have one actor who is still there, but most of uh, uh, of the plants went broke. As uh, real, as as uh, the trust is concerned, the trust is not there anymore because it is difficult to go and find something because there is no. Uh, defined seed needs that is clearly uh, localized based on which the producer can work and deliver. Sometimes they, they can produce and there's no uh, buyer or there's no request and uh, having seeds already treated that you cannot consume being just uh, uh, remaining like this I think when you do it once, it is difficult to do it for a second, uh, a second try. So this is uh, one of the the, 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 the reasons that the trust has been broken. Uh, we have seen some uh, uh, seed companies coming out and trying to start something using a number of uh, producers, small producers, to work with them and uh, make up something uh, trying to get into the formal uh, uh, aspect of seed production, but it has been difficult until now. And another thing that you can, uh, you can consider is that for several years, the, uh, the seed actors have been working on uh, developing a seed law, which in turn is not yet uh, being adopted until now by the government, but the donor community is now uh, decided to work along that side to have at least the government uh, come up with a new uh, seed law based on which the other actors can uh, work and uh, formalize the seed activity. I don't know if uh, Roger has something to add. I'm handing over to him. Uh, well, uh, I, I would just like to add something to uh, that um, uh, Augustine said uh, just now. We, we saw in Katanga uh, one example of uh, Sagrisim. Sagrisim is uh, one of uh, uh, seed farm that survival after after the looting. The remain the remaining seed farm from the initial World Bank seed farm survival from uh, the looting. The provincial government reload seed production in. Uh, 2016 by ordering seeds to distribute free for farmer in uh, 2017. The seed farm has made no effort to develop its own market. It is dependent on irregular demand and hypothetical support from the provincial government. That's the way you see that uh, th that activity can cannot continue if there is not uh, they are not able to develop the market themselves. Thank you, thank you both for your answer. And this is um, a nice segue to the next question from Alan Isaac. Can you tell us how you approach this study with the government? 
with SEMASEM and other you know um, agencies and the participation of these you know agencies with the aim that they can use this information and recommendations in a practical way. I think Agustin that will be also for you and you know to talk a little bit more about the the work that the mission is doing with the government of DRC. Yes, uh, thank you. I think the mission is uh, envisioning using the uh, recommendations from this uh, study and uh, engage a broad, a much broader discussion with the donor community and uh, the government in order to start a discussion on how to first uh, come up with the seed law which should be the basis for uh, seed activity uh, or seed business in the country because if we do not have a seed law it's really difficult to make something uh, formal out of these discussions so we uh, intend to uh, meet and engage discussion with the uh, new authorities including the minister of agriculture and probably the, the, the Prime Minister and make sure that uh, when the, uh, the new uh, uh, National Assembly uh, convene for the, the, the uh, future, the next session so that the seed uh, issues can be uh, discussed and uh, maybe brought to uh, the attention of the president for signing a, a, a law on that, uh, regarding that. Thank you. Thank Not you very sorry. much. Yeah. Uh, we have also a question about the challenges with the counterfeit in fragile context. How can quality be controlled? And how can you know the genetic source of seeds when control of borders is relatively limited given the circumstances? Yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, take it away. Do you want me to? Any of you? Hello. I can't. You know better than can you hear? Okay. Well, there. Are, I guess you are talking about imports. In general, uh, in, in South Katanga, there was a, a lot of demand. Most of the seed demand in maize was for Zambian hybrids. Some of them went through official customs. Some of them went through the border. But it was high quality seed because it was demanded. The uh, seat uh, border control is not working in uh, in DRC, also because of the lack of a, a proper seat law, and uh, there is not uh, efficient control. Is the quality of the sea is relying completely in the seat producer in the foreign country? So again, with a seat law, it's very difficult to for the seat regulator to guarantee seed quality but to a certain extent is people rely on imported seeds from well-known seed producers in Zambia thank you so the next question is about markets from Kabir Lawal is there sufficient local regional demand for additional pros that improved seeds will bring? If absent, farmers could see it as a disincentive to produce more since they will lose money from low market prices. This is more about like the final, the final product. What is the demand, the regional demand that will create the incentive for farmers to produce seeds?
again for Juan or Roger. Okay, let me read again the, the question. The question is about the local or regional demand. Okay, regional and demand. That will create the incentive for the production yeah, of seeds. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, DRC is not in a position to establish uh, the regional seed markets regulations especially those of, of SADC, because of lack of, of capacity and technical and financial resources. So it will need to get a certain level in the institutional and regulatory background uh, frameworks to be able to do so. Do you, do you also look at, like, at the output level, like the, the final product? You know, not just the seed, like the market for, you know, different products in the region that will create the incentive to produce seed? It's okay. I mean, if you didn't... Well, there is a problem with, in fact, what we found, the, the problems that were comforting this emerging, this emerging seed companies was a lack of demand. A lack of demand because of the very low level of commercial agriculture, which in fact was limited for, by the lack of transport infrastructure. So there was no, it's very difficult to develop a commercial agriculture when you don't have access to inputs of to markets to, to sell your product. So to develop uh, local agriculture, Commercial agriculture is very important because that will develop the demand. In the other hand, now in, in Katanga, most of the food needed, like and, uh, the staple food is maize, they have to import like three-fourths of the requirements of maize food to feed the people. And they import it at very high prices, so there won't be no problem to do commercial agriculture. We saw that the little bit of development of commercial agriculture were like vertical schemes and developing around flower factories where they have the, the farmers have ensured an ensured buyer for the products. But for the time being, the local commercial production is very low and it affects the seed demand. Thank also. you, Juan. So we have time for one more question. And this is uh, a question for Agostino or Roger. Does the government have the financial resources to implement the seed law once enacted? Can you hear? Can you? Roger and Agustin, we cannot hear you. Oh. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, so I was saying that uh, it is... Uh, I think we think that the government is now willing to do something. Uh, and since we uh, we think that the uh, the willingness to push on agriculture now is compared to what we have been used with before, it is different. Uh, we see that the new authorities are trying to, um, they, they, they have increased the uh, agricultural budget. Now it's uh, something that is between 5 and 10 percent, while in the, uh, in the past it was always below 3 percent. And uh, this is a sign that uh, maybe starting now, as we will engage in uh, discussions, there will be uh, some uh, progress on this. 
So, uh, if we have more and more uh, investors coming in agricultural sector, there will be a, uh, a clear demand of agricultural products. And to have specific agricultural products, you need to have uh, precise varieties that have a specific characteristics that can only be uh, guaranteed by quality seeds. So we think that uh, this way it will be possible not only for the government but also for the private sector to move on and uh, work together with the government in order to come up with uh, the progress that we all are uh, looking for to see in the agricultural sector. Thank you. Maybe Roger has uh, something to add. Perfect. Great. Thank you, Agustin. Okay, the time has come for us to wrap up this webinar. I would like to thank our speakers for sharing their expertise on this topic and encourage you all to read the full report, which is available on both AgriLinks and MarketLinks. I would like to also thank the participants in the in the chat room that your comments and your suggestions are really, really good. Keep an eye for our post-event resources from today's webinar, including a recording as well as presentation slides and transcripts to be posted on both AgriLinks and MarketLinks in the coming weeks. And if you are interested in hearing more from the Feed the Future Enabling Environment for Food Security project, Please access the activity page on AgriLinks and be sure to sign up for um, the project's newsletter. Links are located in the web link sidebar. Uh, if you enjoyed today's webinar, join MarketLinks for their next webinar on February 19th, which will explore the minimum economic recovery standards for improved market-based programming and offer guidance and tips for mainstreaming MERS at the donor institutional and practical level. You can learn more and register at marketlinks.org. Thank you again for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.